Yeah. I think we're ready to start. Yeah, I don't have a gavel. Okay, I'm going to call the uh, legislative discussion to order here. And I just want to thank everyone for being here. I just want to um, welcome everyone and uh, start us off by saying it's a very special day that we're having a commissioner led discussion, but it's also Jenna Rourke's birthday. So, yeah. I brought some treats, we have some uh, chocolate almonds and some healthy snacks over here, so please feel free oh, wow. to celebrate uh, Jen's birthday with us. <laughs> I told her I wouldn't sing happy birthday, but anyway, happy birthday, Jen, great, great, uh, have a great day. So um, I'm excited about this commissioner-led discussion uh, on uh, the legislative session, so we'll start by going around the room and we'll all just introduce ourselves. I think we all know actually who's all in the room, but let's just do it uh, as a matter of uh, protocol. So oh, Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, great, thank you. For the tape. So Raphael, do you want to start? Because you're the one right there. We're going to have you start, right, you start. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> He was there Raphael, last time. Raphael Ortega, <laughs> District 5. All right. Victoria Reinhardt, District 7. Jim McDonough, District 6. Melissa Finnegan, Government Relations. Jennifer O'Rourke, Government Relations. Ryan O'Connor, County Manager. Tony Carter, District 4. Mary Jo McGuire, Commissioner, District 2. And Jen, or Janet, yeah. Jen Cassidy, County Manager, Administration. Scott Sipper, Communications, Public Relations. Ron Isaacson, Public Works. Carrie Collins, Community and Economic Development. Joanna Berger, Deputy County Manager of EGCI. Oh, Melissa Jamrock, Commissioner McGuire's Office. Matt Hill, Commissioner Carter's Office. Karen Francois, Deputy County Manager of Information and Public Records. Sarah Swenson, Golf Public. Josh Wilson, Community and Economic Development. Chad Roberts, Ramsey County Historical Society. Darren Tobel, Commissioner of Victoria Reinhardt's Office. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Wow, he got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you all for being here. I am really excited about this. I love uh, commissioner-led discussions, so we can have conversations amongst ourselves about really important topics. And uh, this is really for our, us to have a chance to talk about things uh, that are happening uh, and going to happen at, at the upcoming legislative session. I'm just going to start us off a little bit by just saying thanks to those of you that were able to attend and those of you that helped arrange, namely Jen and Melissa and Claudia, who helped arrange our Ramsey County delegation meeting on Friday. Uh, I thought it was a great meeting. We had, you know, uh, you know, it's hard to get all the legislators to come and we had a really good turnout of legislators, both House and Senate. And uh, we're able to have start the conversations, I'll say, because we all felt that there was, that we need more time. And we were there for an hour and a half, which, was a long time to have legislators in the room, which I was grateful for. We had a number of our staff there uh, to hear the conversations, and we all felt in our debrief afterwards, our, our legislative team met afterwards, and we thought it was important that we continue this conversation. In fact, it was noted at the actual delegation meeting that we wanted to continue this, that, that type of meeting. So we are working on uh, setting up a, a meeting with legislators um, focused on the bonding meetings. And we can have it on any number of issues, but we thought our first one that we would invite legislators to would be around our bonding projects, because we did have a number of questions on them, and we didn't have a lot of time to actually really talk about them. So I think we're gonna talk to Senator Sandy Pappas and Representative Leon Lilly and ask them if they would like to call together, you know, just an informational meeting for legislators and, and us uh, around our bonding projects. So I'm going to throw that out as an idea that we thought would help us to have just greater conversations with legislators and, um, you know, ask what, what you all think of that. But um, also I'm going to uh, open it up for Jen, Jenna Ward to give us a, a little bit of a just a introductory remarks about uh, our legislative priorities and a great sheet that she's put together that will help us track those things and you know just to say thanks uh, you know it's the legislative session as we know is a really busy affair and we're just grateful that we've got both of you down there working for us so thank you for all of that so why don't you do you want to walk us through and then I'm going to just open it up for us to have a um, you know, I'd like to ha hear your comments on the legislative um, meeting and uh, and then we'll we'll take it from there on, on different topics that we we want to highlight here so 
Jennifer. And thank you, Madam Chair. Um, if I could just start out with our delegation meeting and thank all of you who were around the table and in the room. I know Commissioner McDonough, you were the only one that wasn't able to come. We'll get you a packet after this meeting. But um, you know, that's always a meeting that we want to include the staff and have them there for questions. We've enjoyed great turnout for you from you guys in the last two years that I've been part of that. We were happy to have Ryan in the room as the county manager. And I think that means a lot um, to have all of you folks there with us in front of those legislators. I think they really kind of feel the power mm -hmm. of Ramsey County and our agenda in some ways. I was a little disappointed that the meeting got started late because our chair was late <laughs> and uh, yeah. we weren't able to even introduce staff. So I feel like I owe an apology mm -hmm. email to our staff because we had close to mm -hmm. Uh, 30 some staff in the room using their time and uh, just really listening to that legislative conversation but it's kind of a good example of the wide breadth of issues and how things um, are taken up at the Capitol and whatnot the only other thing I wanted to point out is I think Ramsey should feel really good about the turnout that we get uh, you all know Kareem Murphy who does my job for Hennepin and he and I really enjoy comparing notes on <laughs> just where things are at with our delegation and whatnot. And they held their meeting Monday morning. Out of 50 legislators, um, they had about um, 10, per 10, 10 or 12 legislators show up, which is about 20% of their delegation. Mm -hmm. So and the fact had, that we get half, I think, we should feel pretty good about that. Showed up. Um, is there anything you wanted to add in terms of it? I only wanted to add one thing from my perspective, mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, and that was, I think, um, so this was a more ambitious package yeah. that you all approved this year going mm -hmm. up to the Capitol than in years past. It was both more focused in terms of priorities and some single pages to help clarify, but also more ambitious in terms of the overall bonding ask and the number. It was interesting for me to hear legislators digest that, mm -hmm. and I came away thinking that it was a really good approach for to adopt a more ambitious approach. Mm -hmm. um, they were, they're struggling with it. You meant, Commissioner Ortega mentioned that a little bit, right. they're not all sure what to do with the ambition coming mm -hmm. out of the Capital County, but none of them seemed fearful about it. And afterwards, I got a couple of positive comments about the appreciation in seeing the home county here um, bring forward some really bold ideas. And they'd always follow it up with, I'm not quite sure how to, you know, and they would have answers. But um, that was that was illuminating because it was a little bit of a change for us to, to put together a package that totaled the number that it did. And it left me feeling bullish. So that's all I would share. And, and I just want to highlight what Jen said too about our staff in the room. We always struggle with, should we have a lot of staff in the room or should we not? And, um, you know, in a, in a more robust discussion, which we all really wanted to have, and we did get started late, and you always, when you go around and you do introductions, it always takes longer than you think it should with legislators, and we'd love to hear from them as well. And so we just didn't get as much time as we wanted to actually get into some of these issues uh, and uh, and would have, if we had an issue that we needed some discussion on, it was good to have the staff in the room. So um, you know we, we do go back and forth on having on, you know all of our directors in versus versus not, and so we are going to be continuing to play with that. But I do apologize too. I do like it when we get to go introduce, and so they can actually see the breadth of the departments and all the dedication of our department heads uh, in the room. But and there was also an opportunity for our legislators uh, to chat with some of our staff then afterwards you know so it gave them a uh, a chance to have conversations on some issues that they cared about so i did notice that that was happening you know after the meeting we had legislators and staff talking so anyway um, i'm going to open it up now to those of you that were there and if you have any comments and then we can um, start talking about some other i mean then we'll, we can talk about i know there's a couple specific issues that we we, we should talk about and they revolve around some of our bonding projects but Commissioner Reinhardt? Sure. Well, um, I, I thought, I mean, overall it went very well. Um, it was a little frustrating. Yeah. Because um, we didn't get right. a lot of direction. I mean, it was like go around and say what your top priority is. Um, and that's not just introductions. And so right. some took it further than that. And then it's, and then. Um, we had the presentation that went really well, I thought. But there wasn't, I mean, everything was rushed. Right. Um, right. And right. then there was confusion in my mind about, well, there was confusion in the room, period. Uh, it wasn't just in my mind, <laughs> because Carolyn Lane was like, what? I don't know what just happened here. <laughs> we elect the Senate side, but we don't do this side. And, and we used to adopt things. Anyway, so I think 
it was um, probably because there had been a family emergency um, and she came in and was kind of, I had not seen Rena um, not in total control of things before. <laughs> um, anyway, so it just seemed a little strange, but we got what we needed. But even when, um, well, she said that we were going to go until 3.15 and then we would have discussion. But then it seemed like we were going to stop at 3.15. It was like, wait, we have another 15 minutes. <laughs> um, and so even just trying to know when you could talk or how, um, it just, it, everything felt kind of rushed. But the bottom line is um, we got everything out there. Um, maybe not in the way we wanted to, but um, we got everything out there and um, it, it did pique interest of uh, the legislators who were like, wow, you guys are really being aggressive this time. And I was like, yep, <laughs> yep, that we are. Um, it was nice, and I'm glad that Chad is here today, <coughs> that there was the call out for gifts and what was going on there. And uh, so we, we touched on everything, but we didn't spend a lot of time. There, weren't, there wasn't a question and answer period at all, really. Um, so <laughs> I thought, I don't know, honestly, yeah. you can try to plan things differently, but whatever happens at these meetings happens. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry about it. I'd have the staff there and do what yeah. we did. Yeah, do what um, we did. Yeah, I appreciate We get what we can out of it, but I wouldn't fret over. Okay. I just appreciate that because we do fret. I mean, I fret. I'll say, you know, I, <laughs> I want know it to be don't. the best meeting that it can be, and I want everyone to feel like there was a great use of their time. and. And we, you know, we work with our legislative delegation chairs. So then we say, we say, this is your meeting, but we'll help organize it. But then I'm like, wait a minute, I don't want it to be your meeting. I want it to be my meeting, you know. So um, because we knew we wanted a, a more of a question and answer and a flow. And and she and Rena Moran are, are, are chair of our delegation in the House, and Carolyn Lane, the chair in the Senate, did it. We're on a. They hadn't talked to each other right. about yeah. whether then, they were going to have elections, and we didn't. I didn't know that was going <laughs> to happen. We had met with Rena be, and you know beforehand to talk about it. And so you know you can do all you can do a lot of planning, and then it can go the way it goes. But um, it will do that. You know, no and what. <laughs> yeah. And so you know we do want it to be yeah. their meeting, and, and but we are going to call our next meeting. We think we're going to have chairs call it, and it will be sort of our meeting talking about our bonding projects, and um, but. We always want the legislators to feel ownership of it. So there is that balance. I mean, we do, um, it's, it's our meeting, well, meeting ours and the legislators' meeting. So that was what I'm saying, though, that. is that in the end, yeah. we got the buy in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got what they needed, mm -hmm. um, and they knew how to follow up. So, yeah, good. Thank you. Don't fret. Okay. Jen, <laughs> if I and could then, just offer a comment on that. Yeah. Um, for those in the room, we only have one Ramsey County bonding member, it's Leon Lilly. And in the Senate, we have a few more. We have four people who touch Ramsey County. But um, our point in maybe offering a uh, more casual meeting for both legislators and staff is so that they can kind of see a walkthrough of all of really kind of our bonding presentations or our bonding bills, if you will, because we need a whole lot more people advocating for <laughs> what we want to get done and frankly, what they want to get done too, that would end up on our Ramsey County score sheet. But that's why we need, that's why it would be nice to have a follow up kind of meeting. And one of the formats that we, um, Representative Moran and I kind of tossed around, uh, we'll be talking with Senator Pappas about. And that's sort of the Pappas Pizza Parks, um, <laughs> one other P meet. But she has the last couple of years pulled together Pardon. folks in a more informal setting to talk about the Metro Parks bonding oh, um, money and kind of strategizing around that. And it's been a real, you know, yeah. there's pizza at four o'clock in the afternoon and staff and legislators and county commissioners are yeah. invited. And it's kind of a way like she has it in March. How are we gonna get through the next two months? Kind of unified just to get as much parks money as possible. And it's sort of a neat approach to bring people together. So. I would just offer that up as some of you have been there, uh, something that works in a different format. Right. Thanks. Any, any comments? Oh, no. Commissioner Carter, sorry. Oh, okay. Thank you. I was just going to say that the best thing that happened is, is that we got our agenda before the legislators <laughs> yes. early. They were able to at least um, have an overview 
of what we're coming to ask for, and they were able to indicate support. And I thought it was really great that Leon, who started out and went around the room <laughs> questioning our River's Edge project, you know, <laughs> had to come back around and apologize and assert how important it was, you know, for not just us or for St. Paul, the center city here, but how important it is for the state and that he was excited about it. So I, I really felt that was a, a big accomplishment. And I do think that we did put a more aggressive package before them than they are accustomed to, but then that was a really good thing. You know, it gives them something to get fired up about. You know, it gives them a, a package that they can actually get to love with us and get to advocate strongly for. Um, there was some confusion about the room initially, and so clearly we want to make certain that that doesn't happen again. And the agenda, you know, wasn't really clear for all of them. And maybe that's something that we can learn. We have not typically had this big agenda go out, but if we can help our legislators by making certain that they have the agenda in advance and know exactly what's going to happen, then maybe we can avoid some of their internal <laughs> questions about what is perhaps going to continue to be their meeting that we we help big time with. But overall, I just thought that it was that there was good energy for us there, and. Everyone agreed that we didn't have enough time. Mm -hmm. So if we have a second opportunity then, you know, a second bite at the apple here to organize that next meeting, I think that, that can even be better and that we can work together with them at that point to say, what are your expectations? You know, here's what we are going to do and to get an agenda out in advance. So everyone knows what's happening. But thank you so much. You know, I realize that there's a lot of flurry going on as these things get started, the engine is getting going and people are in different places and really trying to come together now to get their focus. And I think we helped with that. And I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. yeah, Commissioner Ortega. Let, let me just add to that. <clears throat> so the two, first of all, I was surprised <laughs> that, uh, and I had, before we started meeting, I, Alice and I were talking. But she was she didn't do her typical critical analysis of our project. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah. You missed it, yeah. 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 You see, she see didn't how talk about you the see, fact that she didn't have the right room and the, right. <laughs> but she didn't I'm criticize our agenda so is, much. Right. And being po I'm keep being polite back. Yes, you are. You are. I love that. <laughs> and then when I was leaving, Leon Lilly came up to me for what it's worth. But at least, to Tony's point, he changed, he changed his, uh, he came up to me, he says, I think we could get some money for this River's Edge project. All right, we gotta push it home. Yeah, so, so I think, to your point, that he started out here, and by the end of the day, he was all removed. So. And I, speaking of Alice, uh, because we know how she can not always be as supportive as we'd like of all of our things, um, I, I did appreciate that she didn't go right out and give her concerns. She has had made concerns over River's Edge, but I think enough people have talked to her yeah, she's she gotten sh information that she's not openly um, critical, critical yeah, of it. Yeah, so and cool. I think she might even be supportive. But then, um, but she was she really talking in favor of like Gibbs Farm and the second train. Yeah. I mean, there's a number of our projects mm -hmm. that she's really yeah, supportive she's of. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was a, uh, and I noticed a she bit of a change that. that we had. Yeah, Jim, you and, missed that. It was a big and, milestone. And, and the other thing is uh, the, the staff has, has done a real good job. I, I mean, I think Jennifer, you probably have not. I mean, this went as well as any other Thanks. one. Thanks. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it was fine. A and the other thing is, uh, Carrie and Josh did a very good job. Yes. But I think uh, I, I think they make a good team because as we've met individually with legislators, uh, I think Carrie has uh, become more uh, ambidextrous <laughs> in how to handle <laughs> everybody. Uh, well. And uh, I think she did a very good job yeah. in uh, yeah. in uh, trying to hit the concerns of everybody, having already gotten a scan of people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it all went well. Yeah, yeah really, thanks. <coughs> well, I just wanted to say that um, Leon is not only a legislator in my district, but he's a really good friend. Mm -hmm. So um, if there is anything, in fact, he relies on me to um, bring things uh, to his attention okay. uh, for Ramsey County. So um, he's got good relationships with everybody around this table. Yeah. He's been a friend for a long time. So if there is something that you need quickly, 
Um, don't hesitate to mm -hmm. ask. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for that, and we will just continue these conversations. We, we, um, right. We'll just keep courting our our relationships with our legislators, and we all have really good relationships. And now we're just taking that next step forward of getting them to be supportive of of our projects. And so I think part of this. Um, Conversation, Jen. Did you want to go over this a little bit now? Go over sure. just a little bit more on this, but then, then I want to because um, we have other issues. We have our big bonding priorities, mm -hmm. and then we just have a few that I I'm, I want to just uh, bring up about our housing and our community projects. Just just to talk about them a little bit. But um, as Jen's getting ready to talk about this, I want us to be thinking right about okay, how are we? Um, working together as a, as a county uh, board on, on moving our issues forward. When we're down at the Capitol, mm -hmm. letting Jen and Melissa know we're, we're down there, we've been down there, so they can add it to their sheet of who's we've talked to, and just that we're all working together on this, so that if you hear anything, if you hear something, say something. You know, if you hear anything <laughs> from anybody, or you talk to someone, let, it, let the team know, so we can add it to the, the growing, hopeful, support that we're getting for these issues or you know if we have any concerns we can address them right away so do you want to just uh, touch on any of these or sure. and um, if anyone else see, you know, if someone sees something they want to highlight this would be the this would be the time now for us to sort of hash out any any questions or concerns we might have on these issues and, um, and uh, that so I'll be real quick on this madam chair um, Melissa helped me out put, putting this together uh, this really is just sort of a status update, bill numbers and such, bill authors and such, really to save off any questions really for purposes of this meeting. But a lot of our agenda when it comes to our bonding requests, except for River's Edge, was introduced last session, frankly. The Riverview um, Corridor, the Rush Line BRT, even 35E and County Road J was introduced last year. So um, there isn't a lot of work to do in terms of uh, taking bill jackets out and whatnot. Um, moving up the list to the RE Center, mm -hmm. as you guys probably all know, Sam Walseth and Rob Vanasik are under contract with the, um, with the joint board mm -hmm. and great guys to work with. Um, I've got the jackets right here right now because all the Washington delegation members have signed on and we're filling in the cracks with more Ramsey County folks, but um, I feel like we're in really decent shape with that. Uh, as, as you all know, um, the new minority leader, uh, Senator Kent was at our meeting on Friday mm -hmm. and I happened to run into her in the hallway yesterday in the state capitol which was great but um, confirmed with her she's hoping that between Ramsey and Washington we could have one more tour just to kind of sweep up any of those folks whether they be commissioners or legislators who haven't gotten to see it yet so that'll be a pretty easy thing to organize mm -hmm. but um, knock on wood I think we're feeling pretty good about where that is it was included in the governor's bill so as you can see from a sheet like this, there's a hundred random factoids that we could educate you on on any particular bill or project um, or policy area leading down to the bottom of the page with uh, the last four things that are listed on there. But uh, we are here to answer any questions for you. And then if I could, Madam Chair, I think at some point we should come back and maybe do a deeper dive on River's Edge and Commissioner Ortega to kind of talk about the many meetings we've had with legislators and where that all stands. Okay. Yeah. Can I said two okay. things just to the plug as we were planning. Uh, one, St. Paul, from what Jen's heard, you can expand on this, has been talking out of the same kind of talking points and areas and we're hoping to hear that. That's what I got an email yesterday just acknowledging that. Mm -hmm. So if you want to expound, you could on that. Second one, can you mention our capital pathways in turn too? Yes. Thank you. Uh, on the capital pathways in turn, a lot of you know the Citizens League program. They've um, create this really great program, it's in their fifth year. We're taking advantage of participating in that this year. But it really sets up a nice pipeline of getting young people of color into the capital scene, lining them up with somebody like a Ramsey County or other, um, another group or, to, or legislative office to kind of be the host for that. We have a, a wonderful young woman, her name is Genesis Cazero, and she goes to Hamlin, she's a senior. Um, She's actually pre-med and is interested in maybe turning um, turning and going down more of a public policy lane. So our job this session is to show her, kind of take her around the Capitol. Um, she'll be helping us with taking notes in committees 
setting up meetings, maybe meeting you in the parking lot and walking you up to the super secret hearing room. Uh, just kind of doing all the things that you hope an intern or a, um, another staff person can do. Um, she'll be in the, she'll be with us about 12 hours a week, so we're really excited about her. I, I want to just talk about a couple of conversations I've had on, on um, we're going to get to River's Edge, but on the winter recreation area because it did come up, and I'm doing some of this for Jim's benefit. You know, Kali, you know, mentioned, you know, like I just don't get it, you know, why we're supporting, you know, this, and we, we, you know, we didn't get a lot of time to talk about, you know, that it's a no-cut sport at Central, that it really does reach communities of color, that, you know, there's a great equity issue here, and so, you know, we are going to be meeting with those legislators, and Nicole at the County Road H and 35E meeting got a, ask, a question asked by a, a legislator, why, why is the winter rec area in front of County Road H? Because they saw J. 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 Sorry, J. H is in my area, sorry. <laughs> H is on 35W, right. Sorry, J, yeah. County Road J. And, um, and Nicole did a great job of saying, you know, well, the winter rec area has been around. Uh, it's been a project of the counties for a long time. It's really to address, you know, equity on the East Metro. And I mean, everyone felt like she, you know, really addressed the, the issues of, of really, we, we support all these, we support all these projects. And the fact that they're numbered, you know, is part of the MMB um, project list, but really, as a county, they all address needs that we all have. But I, 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 I understand, as the bonding committee told me, she did a great job. <laughs> so, of um, answering that question. So it's just come up in a, in a couple of different ways, and I asked Nicole, because she's not able to be here, because she's doing the Badness Heights naming uh, press conference right now. Uh, what she wanted to talk about here, and she said, "Well, I, I do want to know more about our lobbying efforts on, uh, or on what we are doing around the Winter Rec area." So it's just a, on, on. I think we're getting Mark and the group that he's working with. She's got a lot of those advocates in her area, as I do in mine, and and um, you know the schools, and we've got a, an ally in Representative Kelly Moeller on that. So I think it's just, a, a, just a. Yeah, we all we all want to get this over the finish line this year. I mean, we all know that. I mean, it, it, we have so many really worthy projects here. We'd like to get that one off our plate. And uh, anyway, she just mentioned that she's um, you know supports all of our projects, of course. But she just wants more information on that one and uh, or wants to know how she can be involved in that. So I, I was asking Jen, where what are our lobbying efforts around that? Are we relying on Mark McCabe and his department to do that, or you know, I mean, it was just sort of something we're we're noodling about. So, do you want to, Jim or Victoria? I can't remember whose hand I saw first. Jim. Not on this. Like oh, okay. Do you want to? We'll, we'll just well, finish I the winter rec area. You know, if we are talking about this as an equity issue, mm -hmm. I mean, quite frankly, it's not a whole lot different than a golf course. Yeah. It costs money, and we know that there are diverse groups coming to. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter which golf course, but golf courses <laughs> and our arenas and the other things. Yeah. Um, and so if we're going to, I mean, we really need to back it up. Yeah. We can't just say there's people from the East Metro, there's uh, people, that, and yeah. because I think it was Coley that said, you know, <laughs> really, how much, mm -hmm. how right. many we, people are going to be there? Yeah. So I think we, do we, need, to, we need to back it up yeah. if we can. And, and we do have those numbers, but yeah, we, we well, well we and are. so I think it's it's about yeah. what our arguments are. Yeah. Um, because I think, I mean, it would be absolutely fabulous and people from all over the East Metro mm -hmm. um, would be able to participate in it. It's through schools, and schools obviously are diverse. I mean, there's so many different yeah. things, but I don't think we've done a good job good, of good. talking okay. about that diversity. And, and, and I, I think, think we will well, take that to heart, yeah. Actually, we've done better than you're aware. Um, well, that's not what I heard from Coley. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jeez, maybe okay. in s certain spots and yeah. maybe with Kaylee Lee. But um, last year during the testimony, um, Chrissy, who runs a program out there, told the amazing story of yeah. the Somali dad running in a snowstorm <laughs> with his three daughters on the cross-country ski course. And they show up every Saturday. I mean, those stories are out there. They're being told. And relayed, and they're coming from the community, so yeah. they're there. Um, you know, if we got to do some. I think we may need to beef up this. As you're mentioning, we should beef this up a little bit. That's what was a part of the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But you can, I mean, you know what the, it was like in that room yeah. on whatever day we were there. Yeah, Friday. Um, Just Friday. It was pretty, there aren't any people of color that are going to come to this. That's what she said. So we have some, yeah, educating to do with her. So well, and, uh, it is kind of, Jen, it yeah. is, if I could throw out there, yeah. um, that's a really good example. Mm -hmm. Representative Hur is not on the bonding committee. Mm -hmm. And the exact reason you want to have kind of a, a meeting to bring people up to speed on those issues. I mean, to her credit, she asked really tough questions and really good questions. Of yes, anything you go on her office as to well. talk to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, adding to that, I spent some time with Representative uh, Jay Zhang the other night, um, really hearing him out on what he would like to see at Battle Creek. Um, he'd rather see money spent on the community center and whatnot as opposed <laughs> to putting it into the um, snowmaking equipment. And I was like. Great idea. That's legit. You're right. It is a city thing. Let's talk about how we get it there. But this just sort of highlights the fact how many of these one on one conversations you need to have with people about all of these issues. And I think between Melissa and myself working with Mark and his team, we could do a better job of even getting talking points for some of you so that you can help fight the fight for us. On and that's, that's all I'm saying is yeah. because I was surprised at the yeah. the passion behind her op opposition to it because of not knowing and and I knew that we had that so don't get me wrong I'm really no, no, really no, supportive we know that I'm talking right. to um, our legislators yeah. and uh, and I knew Jane had some issues with it mm -hmm. um, we've talked about that but so we I think can get yeah. this across yeah. the finish line but we have to try to whatever that information is we need to make sure that we're getting it out there Appreciate yeah. double down okay I had the opportunity, mm -hmm. thank you, um, to talk with Kelly afterward and really to assure her that we would get someone to talk with her about this. I had the sense, and actually heard directly from her, that this wasn't about the numbers, mm -hmm. you know. It really wasn't about whether there were stories, you know, because she acknowledges that there are users mm -hmm. who are diverse users. And I don't think she's looking to hear the numbers, but the good news is what she was looking for was how are the people of the community engaged, you know? If in fact this is about diversity and it's about equity, we have cultures in that community that do not just normally flock to mm -hmm. this opportunity for cross-country skiing. How are we using this as an engagement opportunity? to hear from that community okay. how it meets their needs and that falls immediately in line with the kind of work that we do, that we want to do, and I am certain that she's not against this project from talking to her, but she's okay. very much for hearing what the community senses as mm -hmm. our work to meet the needs of people in that area you know, to, to supply us with our mm -hmm. community engagement and equity focus. That's the work she's trying to make certain is being done and it is the work we want to do. So as we address this, you know, I hope that we are really working to make certain that we're able to respond in that way. And yes, there are people who are engaged already, you know, who've come to us to say this is a great opportunity to serve communities of color on the east side, you know, who can use this facility and who can in fact use it as a community gathering opportunity. So I think that's what she was trying to hear. How does this fit into the culture, you know, rather than how do we fit the culture into it? Well, <laughs> let me yeah. echo some of that, because we, Jen and I heard some of that too. Mm -hmm. and, and boy, every legislator has their lens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they look at the same project, yeah. they come yeah, up with a different view yeah. of it, they have a different objection. And we're just going to have to be able to deal with all of that. That's one of the things why I say uh, <coughs> that uh, <coughs> Carrie's getting very amb ambidextrous because she's really learned how to put answers together for, <coughs> for the different lenses. But, you know, the way I responded to that question, it says, was very much the same way. And, you know, these things are not built for any one culture, period. That's number one. It's for all of us. And it's up to the county to program these things so we invite people in. The, we are, we're building this for everybody. 
and we will need to do the kind of programming that welcomes everybody to come forward and check it out. I mean, I learned how to ski. I'm a Puerto Rican from New York City. That's <laughs> yeah. a whole lot more yeah. difficult than yeah. being here. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, uh, yeah. I like that sort of community engagement. Yeah. yeah. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And I just really appreciate this whole conversation, and I think it can be transferred to other projects, too. And I've actually told the ski community that talks to me, I said, and you we really need for you to be a really big face in this because as a county we have a lot of priorities so I really need for you as a community to be out there talking to people and I think they are trying that but that's another thing I need to talk to Mark and about you know we need for the I need to know what those efforts are because we do want that community to really rise up because we have a lot of projects and we don't want the legislature to give us Battle Creek and then say, well, we gave you Battle Creek and now we're not going to entertain r &E Center or not entertain River's Edge. Yeah. So we, we definitely want it and uh, I think we just keep in mind all of these all of these um, concerns that we've brought up and, and it, they will, will add them to the conversations we're going to have with our legislators uh, on a number of topics. So thank you all for that. And now do we want to talk a bit about River's or Jim? Jim has oh, a question and then... Before, okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I want to hear about River's Edge. Two things. One is um, Jim's farm, he funded that. You don't have a list of your ads. You're right. So I think we need to make that so it's accurate. You're yeah. listing what got funded or recommended yep, from yes. the governor. Mm -hmm. I think he did 7.1 okay, yeah. or something. Yeah. And, yeah. The whole mm -hmm. and then I just want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, you know, what does it mean here where we're saying we're following the lead on Homes for All Coalition and the objective to it. I do think this is going to be a housing year that got here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. has 276, yeah. I've been using it. Mm -hmm. um, they, they got a $500 million proposal mm -hmm. and some policy stuff. But I think the wind in the sail for housing is there. One of the things you know that I've been talking about with partners and stuff is I mean, we can't, this is a huge issue for us. Know, whether it's roads, bridges, and transit funding, yeah. housing, education, but the, how we leverage and strengthen the work in partnership for the state to step up in these areas is, otherwise we, it ends up following on us and our community. And so I just wanted to raise that, you know, we're, we're saying following the lead for Homes for All Coalition, I don't know if we want to get stronger, take a position mm -hmm. that we're supporting their baggage, so that it's actually stronger and can you yeah. folks will work on that and be helpful in that, yeah. we can testify on that. Or if we feel comfortable with this wording, yeah. we can just kind of leave it the way it is. Mm -hmm. Is it, Commissioner, I feel like, okay, go. I would just, this we prepared solely for this meeting today. This isn't a public document that goes mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. the state platform that you're familiar with. That's our like public facing. So we take yes. it a position we're supporting. And did we support all yes. for us? Yes. yes. The 500 million we probably got. Yes. Okay. So then why wouldn't we say that rather than say following the leads of Homes for All? Mm -hmm. Well, again, this is just for, this is really more of a tracking sheet. Um, mm -hmm. Our policy positions call out the Homes for All. I would envision we testify on that, we participate in we, meaning uh, commissioners like you and others, just like last year, because it maybe ramped up a little bit more. Um, we use some of our power to place strategic calls to the speaker and folks like that to ask them to be strong on those sorts of funding requests. Um, we can introduce our own bill. I don't know that it matters. No, I think we need to just stay fully behind their bill and stay yep. totally focused right. on what they're doing. It's a good bill. And that's it's aggressive what, and more. And that's what the following the lead meant. We're not running our own jackets. We're not developing our bill. We're yeah. letting them do that part and throwing our support behind it. Absolutely. And then they'll tell us when they need us, and you'll know when right. they need us for other things we need to do. Okay. Okay, that's a good call out, um, Commissioner Reiner. Well, and I think you're absolutely right. And when you look at what the, the governor's, um, where he's focusing you know, in, you know, being in that meeting yesterday, it was pretty amazing for the day. That the county governor uh, planning and voice uh, chair. Um, so wherever we can align, um, we're going to be better off. Uh, I'd like to switch to one other subject yeah. where I think it's in alignment as well. well. Yeah. Is there anything else on homes for all? I mean, I think we all support that. Um, Jim, if we, we got to get you a packet, but that's that's our final of our. That's what we approved in. 
and committee. Members. Madam Chair, can I just have one part. Oh yeah. Just to connect to last session too, um, because it's it's good to hear them coming out strong from the lieutenant governor. The frustration that I think we felt around that table last year. I'll just speak for myself. The frustration I felt last uh, winter. Okay, I, I don't want to speak for anybody else. Uh -huh. Was we would hear that in the room and they did not see it translated to substantive action up at the Capitol in a way in which we saw them leading it. It became this mm -hmm. thing of why aren't you all up there getting this into the bill and then we're there to support you? And it's like, well, you yeah. kind of have a big seat in this whole game. And so, my, my biggest hope is, and I take them that they want to be more engaged on the outset, that'll be the big key is how they translate what you heard yesterday, hopefully going forward. Well, and I can tell you that at that meeting yesterday, they acknowledged the fact that. Yeah, we met and we talked and we all had these great aspirations and then we did nothing. They they acknowledged that right up front and said that's and now you know, and then in January there was funding that became available and stuff. And they said, you know, we cannot not anyone around this table can uh, stop the pressure, just keep on going. And what was it? Commissioner who? Yeah. 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 Um, said uh, <laughs> you know, not a dime less, not a dime less. Wow. Um, and yeah. so, it's just saying, you know, this is what we are going to ask for. It's what we need. It's, it's what you have to give us. And we're not going to settle for anything less than that. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, and because I hadn't been there before that, I didn't know how strong that feeling was. But it was, it was very clear around the table that that they needed to get something done. And as I said this morning, I made it very clear around that table that Ramsey County had already done stuff without them. So, um, and I did mention some of the other things to know and all those other things, but thanks to Matt, I can tell you, because it was great having the phone right there. <laughs> um, but it, it is something that as much as we can push um, with the rest of that group, um, is I, we're all in better shape. The other issue, um, and I did bring it up, was the issue of um, the Emerald Ash Borer. Mm -hmm. And it's not a huge part of our agenda, but it is a huge part of the climate change and the energy um, issues that the governor is very concerned about. And it's, um, I think, more so than any other governor um, that I can remember in uh, recent history, he seems to be really, he zeroes in on what he wants. And if you are smart enough to align the things that you want, I mean, you've got all these other things. I mean, you've got a lot of things. But if you can align something and point to another thing that he really wants, um, climate change and, and uh, carbon free and you know all these things, the Recycling and Energy Center, I think that's one of the reasons that we like that, because we're really reducing the carbon footprint um, and what we're trying to do into the future. Um, so, um, and I know we've got the r &E staff or contract lobbyists and others that are really supporting this. Um, the question came up about, well, why until 2030? And the response was, and why isn't wood waste in our solid waste master plan? So just in case you get those questions. First of all, the solid waste master plan is about municipal solid waste. And so it's, wood waste is not part of that, and so it, it wouldn't be in our master plan. But, um, you know, it, new technologies take a long time, mm -hmm. and that's what we're talking about. So we're not talking about until the end of time, we're talking until 2030 when we have alternatives, as we know from the meeting down there. So I don't know, uh, but I do know that the interest is there because of the environmental issues mm -hmm. and climate change issues on both the r &E Center and um, the Emerald Ashbore um, wood waste and reforestation. So I don't know how, I just want to make sure that when we're, when we're talking to legislators about it that we, we frame it that way. Mm -hmm. Doesn't change what we are doing, it's how do you frame it. Um, and I think kind of, you know, in other things that we've got as well, um, if, if there's a way to frame it into into, through the lens, as you said, everybody has a different lens. If we can take whatever we've got here and put it into the lens that we know the governor is looking through um, so that he understands the, the connection to it, the better we are in getting what we want. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, leads very well into River Sitch. <laughs> you know, one last, yeah. I just want. Okay. 
And I know I'm sort of the, <laughs> I always come up with the, I feel like I'm the naysayer in the group sometimes. But this is a presidential year. We are talking about the governor and the house. We've, what about the Senate? What about the, what's viable on yeah. this? Where are we going to hit the wall on some yeah. of these things? That's a good yeah. That's a really good question. I, I'd love to hear your answer. I'm going to, yeah. Okay. Um, real briefly, I can take a stab at that. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. We had the Republican, the Senate Republicans out last week for a River's Edge tour. Um, and it went Senate pretty Bonding well. Committee, so they were some Republicans and some Democrats. Some Republicans, some Republicans, Democrat? some Democrats, but it went pretty well. And we used the lens, if you will, of um, business development good for downtown and really this is the infrastructure public realm that we need to build that up from um, so I'm hopeful we have a meeting with Senator Senjum coming up and scheduled um, we'll have a meeting with Senator Chamberlain um, other Republicans were open to the idea um, we've, uh, you know I think I think there's a lot on here for Republicans to like, and frankly, we have a lot of transportation asks too that might be a different kind of angle into their kind of bonding bill. So, right. yeah, Jim. Who, who, oh, sorry, Raphael. Who was the senator from Alexandria? Uh, Ingo Britson. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time with him. He was a whole lot more receptive than the rest mm -hmm. of them. But I'm talking about the whole agenda. Yeah. How, how are we doing, not just River's Edge, the whole agenda? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really good question. Do, Jim, do you want to weigh in on this? I, or I, I do, a little about? bit. And I think it goes back to the opening here. Um, obviously, the Senate's saying not nearly as big a bond right? Maybe, maybe it's a billion dollars. I don't know. They, that's a number they're comfortable with over a two-year period that they've indicated. But, I, you know, the more we can focus in on the fact that, you know what, we're 20% of this population in the state, 23, 24%, right? We're part of the economic engine. When there's a billion dollar bill, we, our legislate, our delegation cannot be happy with five million dollar <laughs> Thank you. We I need agree. to say, when there's a yeah, billion a dollar point. bill, we need a hundred totally. million of that here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so to your point, yeah, the Senate's not going to be as easy as the House, but the more we get our delegation, and That's folks really thinking about point. that, you know, the days of us being happy with a couple of small that. bonding yeah. wins and we celebrate and walk away are gone. Yeah. This is we, a great we've this got a great to speech we're gonna give at our legislature. You know, yeah. What we contribute, we Absolutely. need that kind of level of partnership yeah. with the state. Yeah. Well, and that's what Jen and yes, I have been absolutely. saying, but my question is, is bigger than that. We're still kind of, I get that. And Jen and I have been giving that message with the people we've met. But there has to be a way, I mean, we need to start, we're not going to win with the Democrats alone. Because <laughs> we got to get some out to the Senate and convince some folks to come along with our agenda. <laughs> yeah, I totally. Gonna, yeah. Tony. I was just going to add that it's really good to hear that the uh, person from Alexandria yes, he got was, this. He got it. Now he did. 23% of the yeah. state's population. Yeah. But we are also the major entry point, you know, the Twin Cities area and Ramsey County as a very major part of that. For everybody who comes into this state, we're the major entry point. So what we do here affects everyone. We're the economic engine for the state. And so I think you're right, Jim. Um, and during, during the session, Last week, we were able to just say, this is exciting work. It's a big lift for all of us, and we all need to stand up to this big lift. But we need you know? to be talking to Republicans, too, is my point, not oh, yeah. just Democrats. Yes, that's true. That's really true. Important. Yeah, you know, Starting course. with our yeah. delegation, oh, of we course. really need to be excited about this. We may not have the balance of well, we Republicans there. Well, we our delegation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not just our delegation. No, no, we, we gotta, don't have the balance. It's exciting to hear go that somebody to from Alexandria. How many Republicans on the bonding committee? Is that um, yeah. Over half. Over half. Over half. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. So let's get this guy from Alexandria to help us. Well, that's the point. Right. Because right. less than half doesn't get it. Right. Uh -uh. Even if you right. had 100% of Absolutely. Yeah. You're right. <clears throat> These <clears throat>
I like these numbers to give our delegation the, the strength to keep fighting, but we need definitely need Republicans. Yeah. So I, I actually I want to talk about Riverside. I don't know how I I, I actually am going to ask Chad a question just to prepare you, Chad. I just want to ask you how you think Gibbs Farm is going to factor into all this with what you've been doing and talking to legislators. But I do want to talk. I mean, we want to get to River's Edge too. Yes, so should we ask Chad to quick come up and then we do River's Edge? Sure. To Chad, just curious. Um, you know, we're we love that it's in the governor's bill. We have a lot of support in our delegation. I think you've got Alice on board, which is always a good thing. And I think yeah. you've got Jamie Becker Finn and and Mary Kunish Putin. I mean, we've got really good Ramsey County legislators that are, mm -hmm. I think, really. A, I mean, I think our delegation loves this project, but I'm just curious if you want to make a few comments on what you think is uh, well. happening. <laughs> we didn't get a chance to ask you. We didn't, yeah, and he just got married, so we're congratulations on that. Uh, just at the weekend. Appreciate that. It's been a busy, uh, busy few weeks here. Uh, yeah, we uh, we do have this, uh, Senator Weger is the lead author in the Senate. He is on capital investment. Um, uh, Representative Houseman and Representative Willie both signed on as co-authors of okay. the uh, Bill in the House. The, um, we're working on connecting with uh, Representative Dean Erdahl, Republican, okay. Okay. the ranking Republican on capital investment, and he is he's strong on history, he likes it. Um, so that's, that's good. Yeah, I, love uh, I, that. I know him just a little bit through the rest of the world. <laughs> So that's helpful. Uh, on the Senate side, not as connected there. So we're seeing that as being a potential challenge as well as, and I think you're right to be bringing that up, by the way. It's yeah, absolutely. Uh, but we're hoping we'll get Senator Chamberlain to sign on as a Randy County person. We also, though, serve students from 60 different legislative districts. Uh, so we've got letters coming in from each, hopefully every district, but I'm not, you know, like, <coughs> telling Anna yeah, about that, but good, we're, we're good getting goal. some from educators for <coughs> how we serve their students across the state. So that's gonna be positive for us. Our bill is big for us, not that big in the grand scheme of the billion right. dollar bonding bill. I personally don't think it's gonna have a negative impact on the larger Ramsey County mm -hmm. projects. I don't know if they might trade out something on that or not this fall around. But uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's I an interesting point. Uh, yeah. Jim? Yeah. The thing I would say to that, you know, because we, you know, it's a little bit of a delicate dance, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is the more you can leverage support from other legislators yep, because of your base. Yeah. I mean, we got one Republican chamberlain, and we're going to be looking for them to get behind something, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to argue really hard. India Chamberlain behind Riverfront, that's our number one priority. I don't want to do it at the expense of your project by any means. But I, so being a little bit strategic working with the team about where you can leverage strength and where we can. So we're not, we're dancing smoothly together and not <coughs> step on each other's toes. I think it's going to be really helpful, especially in the conversation mm -hmm. in this and what that looks like. Commissioner McDonough, that's a very good point. I think we have been working pretty well together on this. Uh, one of the things that we get to stress, and which I think is a key issue for almost every project in Ramsey County is adopted, it's regional. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just serve mm -hmm. this county. Uh, Gibbs Farm is a statewide asset, and we're you know, proud of that. And we're going to keep making that point, too. Uh, so and we're being supportive of it. Uh, We've got support from some other historical organizations in the states that also do advocacy work with the Capitol, so we'll be getting some good support from that. Uh, but we are lining up over the next two weeks some more authors. We want as many as possible from every party. And uh, we'll see how that effort goes. It's, as you know, challenging. <laughs> uh, the thing is, it's a good project, just like the rest of the Ramsey County Dog that I think is strong. So, and I see the regional importance personally. River's Edge is huge. That's a really big deal, and I'm really hoping that it gets more traction. And I think that the uh, recycling center, that's significant. And it supports environmental causes that I suppose the historical site we're not supposed to care about. <laughs> no, you are. <laughs> and, you can care. And we yeah. partner really closely with the Dakota community, and it's kind of a tentpole issue for them. So, we're on board with that. We think those are important. We'll say nice things, believe me. Um, 
but you know, at the end of the day, we're really hoping to see a lot of bipartisan support for our project, and we think it's one that people can sign on to without it being controversial mm -hmm. for the most part. So, well, yeah, and I just, especially for this one, I really would look to to the Buchanan Hoggets in Greater Minnesota yeah. Republican Senators because I can tell you, I mean, Chamberlain doesn't live in Ramsey County. He's got such a small portion of Ramsey County that um, if you could get someone that a uh, Republican um, that is, uh, that gets that statewide significance, mm -hmm. it's probably better. I agree with you. Uh, but we're going to be getting as many people as we can. Right. right. Uh, focusing on uh, folks we think that have a good chance of being influential on us. Mm -hmm. And uh, he does, he has in his several important positions that mm -hmm. would be helpful for mm -hmm. us. Uh, but yeah, we're, uh, we anticipate continuous game planning and strategizing as it as evolves with John and her team. Uh, so we look forward to continuing that. Right. And as much as you can get right outside supporters, I mean, if it's, not, if it's not a Ramsey County project. I mean, we, we try to think, think of none of ours as just a Ramsey County project. This is all regional, but I, I think it's great that you're getting all those schools to let all those legislators know that this is something they want. So good good job. And the history and, buffs. And the history <laughs> buffs, right. So good good luck with that. I mean, we you know, we love that project. Thank you. I just wanted to have a little bit of a conversation, right, about how we were going to mm -hmm. all work together and... Um, you know, just, yeah, not step on each other's toes, but really support each other. So we'll keep those conversations going. And I'm sensitive to the time. Do we have 15 minutes? Can everyone give 15, 15 more minutes? we got to spend some time on River's Edge. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. Uh, we'll do 15. I mean, uh, yeah, it's sorry. Fine. It's, fine. yeah. So I definitely want to have some conversation on this. <laughs> so who wants to tee it up? Uh, Raphael, do you want to talk a little bit about the meetings you've been having with legislators? Well, I know go ahead, you've Jennifer. Been both uh, let me just start. say that okay. Jennifer, Josh, Carrie, uh, I lost track of how many people we've met. A combination of all of us uh, uh, we've met uh, with quite a few folks, and we got quite a few on the calendar. Everybody has come up with a different objections, but every time we leave the room, they say, this is a great project. Number one, and number two, many of them say have said it's about time Ramsey County came up with something that uh, was a wow to it, was powerful. Mm -hmm. So I think it's positive in that sense. The negative side is we're kind of last on the queue. A lot of these projects yeah. have been here for years. Yeah. So there are those kinds of object Then each, each representative has a different mm -hmm lens, as I say, and picks up, you know, some say you'll never get the railroads to agree to this. Uh, another one brings up uh, the crime in the streets of St. Paul. Why are you building this? That was the latest <laughs> one. Why? Nobody's going to come and rent in this with all the crime in St. Paul. I mean, it, it's, a, it, it's the whole the whole thing, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. Jennifer? If I could just oh, add Lord. to that, that was a, a good catch up. Um, <laughs> We've met with about 15 legislators, I would say, out of our 25. Yep. Uh, as you know, they're part-time. So when we started last summer and in the, the fall, they were just really slow go in terms of coordinating schedules and people even being in the building. Um, we're this close to having bill jackets. Senator Cohen and his staff um, agreed to let us use their name to get mm -hmm. the bill authored and whatnot. Um, drafted it myself, felt really good about that. But um, <laughs> So we'll soon have bill jackets, and those are the yellow and greens. Um, I've talked with you a number of you about this. We don't, um, we obviously don't have people signed on to those yet. I think we'll have no problem filling it up with co-authors. Uh, we've, Commissioner Ortega and I have, you know, flat out asked a few people to be our chief author. And when you ask somebody to be your chief author, you're really asking them to be your champion mm -hmm. and to go to bat for you and to fight for you. Mm -hmm. And you guys all know the Ramsey County delegation. We only have. Uh, a certain number of people that actually do that. Um, you can laugh, but it's also pretty serious stuff mm -hmm. yeah. when you sit in this sh this it's place and up. try to figure out who's going to get 40 million or yeah. a version of 40 million dollars yeah. for you at the end of the day. Um, I just did a count this morning between all of the things that our legislative delegation has asked for already. There's 96 bills between the House and the Senate, so it's really about 40. 
um, 46 asks out there already of things that people have asked for. All bonding. <laughs> All bonding requests. So the best <laughs> example that's out there and the one we get the most, um, and it's funny how they ask, they say, well, you know, the city of St. Paul mm -hmm. is asking for 55 million for the bridge. Yeah. Like, have you thought about that? <laughs> no. And I think we would answer, we think about that every day. <laughs> <laughs> if you add them all together, are they up to 20% of the bonding bill? Yeah, we need it. <laughs> I don't know. But it's, you, know, you guys all understand, and I think the staff behind me understand, we're dealing with a lot of other people's asks, mm -hmm. and it comes out yeah. in weird ways. Um, okay. For example, Representative Hers, number one, project did not make it into the bonding bill. It was a playwright's mm -hmm. bonding dollars that she had asked for. So sometimes things come out sideways from people mm -hmm. in trying to, um, not saying this was happening, but everyone wants their thing to rise sure. above and succeed. So yeah. we're dealing with a little bit of that. I would just maybe close this part of it in that um, then the negatives, if you will, really kind of come around three things. Where are you at with the railroads? Um, this is a lot of money coming in for the second year. As you know, everything that was introduced last year, there was no bonding bill, so everything's still alive from last year. Um, and then they ask how we're coordinating with the city, and, which we are. Um, I know for a fact, um, I heard from Senator Kent's staff yesterday as I was setting up an appointment that her legislative assistant had sat down with Noel Nix, which is great, and Noel had talked about River's Edge as one of their um, kind of priorities or something. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> yeah, no. So that's just a good example of when the staff are all talking to each other mm -hmm. about exciting things like that. Um, mm -hmm. It helps us feel better. Jen, let, let, oh, me just say, go let, let me okay. just say that, I, and I just Thank finished you. writing a letter for Noel asked me mm -hmm. in support of the bridge. So I just, I just, so, but here's, here's the issue with all of this, and rather than going back and forth, and that is we got to change the the, 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 the framework by which these legislators uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, sort of view this, because they say, well, you know, City of St. Paul is asking for, uh, for the bridge money, and Ramsey's asking for River's Edge, and that's in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost sure. like, and I, and I, you know, I bring up, I mm -hmm. says, wait a minute, Minneapolis got two stadiums, the Nicollet <laughs> Mall, all within four years. Yeah. I did, twice. I, yeah. I, 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 didn't, I didn't hear any of this, you know. Yeah. I, I said, I really don't care, we want them both, and I'm supporting both. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, so, seriously, yeah, we yeah, gotta exactly. start changing yeah. the, the way these apologize. people think. Jim, you had some, and then Victoria. Well, and I maybe we've talked a little bit offline, but you said you mentioned 46 requests mm -hmm. from Ramsey County partners. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have a list of that, or is it? Yep, I have a book. Can you set, oh, I don't want <laughs> yeah. the whole book. But <laughs> That's the I'd like to get a sense of what else is out there. I don't want to say but I'd like to get a sense of what else is out there. Yeah. I don't know if you've got an easy way to do it. Yeah, no. But yeah, yeah, I do yeah, not yeah, want a whole book. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what they do in the legislature. I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but when you're a legislator, they give you a list of everything that's in your district. They don't care if it's city, county, yeah, state. Know. They just count it yours. And they say, here's what's yours in the bonding bill. It doesn't matter which level of government it comes from. So, you know, that's how they tell the legislators and, what they have. So we, we know that that's sort of something they don't always make those decisions. No, I get that. Yeah, I mean, we but, all know but this. But there's an intimidation about absolutely. the number. I hundred million. We should not apologize Big deal. for any of that. <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. I think we should do a handout on what on this that very issue. Twenty for twenty percent of the over twenty percent of the state's population, we need twenty percent of the projects. Okay. Or we could Victoria. just or we could put just, it out there saying we can just sell. Say, exactly. <laughs> right. Victoria, you have some comments. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Right. Anyway. Um, one other question that I had heard and, and I didn't answer it correctly to begin with. Um, was that about affordable housing? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh no, we've got $5 million, and, um, but what I heard from Carrie, and I need to know, <laughs> and I think Trista also said it, because I was like, okay, what just happened here? I thought the $5 million wasn't for, within that, um, That's development. Right. It doesn't but have to be spent youth, there. It doesn't so, have to be in the well, that's it can be outside. No, what they, what they said that's was it. two different things. <laughs> but go ahead, Victoria. Well, I know that, um, I can't remember which legislator. No, I know who it was. It was, um, well, Kali, 
Colleen, Colleen was the one that asked about affordable housing. Um, he was kind of, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I can't Regardless, uh, somebody that was sitting there. Um, and, and Amy, did come it up. was Amy, I think. Amy was mm -hmm. No, she was sitting next to me and she didn't. Okay. I, you know what, it doesn't matter. Because it came from the other side of the table yeah. too. Oh, okay. Literally the other yes. side of the table. Um, but the response that came back was that it, that it was, because I what I said was, um, if they, they're they not going to have affordable housing within the units, but because of the units, this is what I said originally, okay. but, but if you look at the area and the uh, number of affordable housing Which units, is true. it makes it um, something that is acceptable. Plus, they've given us $5 million to do affordable housing, um, but not in that, in those buildings. And what they heard, and what I thought I heard you say too, was that it was in those buildings. So, no, Madam, Madam Chair. No, I'm saying so that, so that Ryan, Ryan, Ryan's going to yeah. okay. clarify Go some of that. I think it's good for us all to practice on this too. So yeah. Carrie yeah. does, does a great yeah. job of answering that <laughs> question. Go ahead. If I get this wrong, come on up. Right away down there. I heard two things from you that day, and I want to make sure I get it right too, because this is always developing. Mm -hmm. The developers committed to a $5 million affordable housing trust. How we spend that money is ultimately going to be Ramsey County's prerogative at right. the board level, and we haven't decided that yet. So on-site, off-site is a decision here, but That's it provides right. you with the flexibility to think yeah. about broader community need, leverage a number of units. That's okay. right. However, um, alongside that, there was a second thing mentioned that would deal potentially with on-site in partnership with the city of St. Paul, which is Correct. they may want to go farther as a city than we even go with that $5 million. And that's the preliminary conversations around potentially their own district around that site to finance additional affordable housing on site. But that's a city part of the conversation wow. that goes outside of the five million, which therefore has both trust and family. potentially wow. on site. Okay, so you will write the Victor. one person that you wow. really need to have yeah. that conversation with is Trista. Mm -hmm. Because she's yes. the one that said to me, no, they changed it, Victoria. I was like, okay, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> right. We will but, follow up. Yeah. Right, we all need it. And we need Tony. we need to have that information and have it be very clear. Yeah, Tony. So I, I yeah. do agree yeah. that we need to all understand this and yes. be able to give that speech the same everywhere yes. we go. And I wanted to just ask a qualifying question about affordable housing within the site. And I heard at the legislative committee meeting or at the legislative delegation meeting that there was this workspace or work something. I forget what the term was. It was a new one. <laughs> Coming up to and the I need to one. know if that is about the work that St. Paul is doing or if that is already there. Mm -hmm. uh, just to be be sure we list out all the other What do you mean by workspace? Yeah. I'm going to ask yeah. if Carrie will <laughs> Carrie's going to explain that. it right now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I, um, Thank you, uh, Shakar. Um, members of the board. I think the confusion is because it's still being explored, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we don't know to what extent we'll be able to do affordable housing on site. And so, but I do think it's important for messaging because this is an important priority, yeah. not just to the board, but to you know all of our, our mm -hmm. legislators as well. Um, when it comes to the affordable housing trust fund, uh, Ryan is absolutely correct. That will be a five million dollar set aside that the board will determine whether or not it can facilitate unit additional units on site or off-site, and if you recall, the vision plan and the housing assessment uh, will help drive a lot of that decision-making, because we'll be able to see if there are pockets within St. Paul or you know, suburban Ramsey County that are in desperate need of housing options, and so it can facilitate that. Or if we determine that we need to deepen affordability on-site, we have that flexibility too. So parking that, in addition to on-site, we are exploring with the city of St. Paul, we're, we're putting together the information they need to do an assessment um, if a housing TIF makes sense on site. And so statutorily, you can do 20% at 50% AMI on site. Mm -hmm. However, the uh, kind of TIF obligations that the city of St. Paul has with the board site and other projects are pretty extensive right now. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to commit to that particular financing tool because A, we, we need to have a, a serious set aside with the City of St. Paul to make sure it makes sense for this project on this site. Um, as far as the live work units go, those are typically settled around the 80% AMI mm -hmm. level. And that's something that the developer is considering doing because it makes sense for the mm -hmm. project and the Class A office and the retail to ensure that there are housing options available for those that are going to work 
within the other towers. And that is a cost that could possibly, possibly be, and I don't want to commit AACOM to doing this because they are exploring it too, but could be um, absorbed by the project. Okay. So, so as far as our conversation <coughs> moving forward, we are exploring all range of housing options on the site because we haven't certainly had a, a you know, decision time mm -hmm. conversation with the board and the developer hasn't committed to those levels just quite yet. Uh, but it's something that we'll, we'll continue to explore uh, as we continue to vet the feasibility of the project with, with the railroad as well. So wow. those are really three areas of affordability that we can talk to. And it's yeah. really great to know that we don't know it all yet, but it's coming. <laughs> so we could spend a lot, yeah, Jim. I hate to be no. a picker, but I guess sometimes I am. But to be just clear and to be clear on messaging, right, where there are so our language actually says, you know, which could be used to expand housing options in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. Everything you said said St. Paul except for once. Mm -hmm. You said and or suburban range to come. Mm -hmm. Now for some people that's gonna be a big deal if we didn't say suburban Ramsey County. Right. We all just talk about St. Paul, but then all of a sudden someday we're spending money in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna say, No, that's not what you said we're gonna do. So I just want to make sure we're really transparent that we're yeah. not. That's, that's a good sense. point. Yeah. 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 We yeah. should yeah. say yeah. Ramsey. Yeah. 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 St. Paul, St. Paul right. and we should say Ramsey. That's right. We, we don't. Mm -hmm. We should Ramsey. say Ramsey County. County. Ramsey County. Period. Call out yeah. the yeah. suburbs. But yeah. I just want to make sure we're yeah. being yeah. very yeah. transparent and accurate. Because there's a going to be no, enough churn right. right. for you guys to deal with without us creating the whole churn. And it's just to say Ramsey County. I think would be suffice. Okay. No, so I think I didn't realize. I thought it had to be within a five mile rail. I thought it had to be within a five block area. That's what I could tell people. I thought it had to be within a certain amount. For the five million, it had to be used close. It had to be used close. No. Okay, well, that's good information for all of us. So we, um, so I'm going to ask the will of the board. So um, love these discussions. We all learn a lot. We all continue to need to continue to learn a lot about these. Do you like having uh, the idea of having a legislative bond, you know, meeting, uh, informational yes. meeting on the bonding specific projects, or probably any? I guess we could call it any of our projects. But you're thinking Sandy might call a meeting, maybe just to talk about bonding projects, or that's what we're noodling around, and we help her call that meeting or whatever. But that would be for legislators and uh, any of, I don't know, hopefully a lot of us who can be there and staff to talk about our bonding projects. Um, if there's other things we need to meet about, you know, a continuation of our legislative delegation meeting, we could have another meeting on that and we can ask our chairs to do it or we could just call it. Mm -hmm. um, just depends on how many meetings we want to have with our legislators and how, how we, we think that would help or whether it can happen. And um, so that may be one question I'm asking, but Jim and Victoria, yeah. So I think, I think <coughs> being more strategic about just not having this as a one and done with the meeting with the legislators is really going to be a part. I think we need to tie it, right? So do we meet like a week or 10 days before the first deadline so we can get on the same page of how do we make sure all our stuff meets mm -hmm. is in that first deadline, right? Or how we're timing it so that there's actually kind of a, a takeaway like, you know, your job is to get our stuff in for mm -hmm. this deadline so that where we stay alive to the next deadline. And that's what I'm just Yeah, out. and we so can think about timing on that. But actually, yeah. an action plan. So mm -hmm. it's not just meeting, it's actually kind of developing an action mm -hmm. plan. How we're supporting each okay. other to help make sure our, our projects are a part of the final bills. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we can talk, yeah. Um, well, let's see. Victoria, do you want to add to this? And then I'm going to let Ryan and then Jen. Yeah. Well, and I, I'm not as worried about setting up meetings with legislators as far as a group meeting. As I, and I, I guess I would take the lead from our, our staff that are dealing with them, you know, if they want to get together and talk to us. But being strategic about um, who we're meeting with and what we're doing and who we expect to be our champion. I mean, this is a short session. Totally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the time that they spend in a meeting, in a group delegation meeting with us, is time they could be spending mm -hmm. getting our work done. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of think that having the group meeting, <coughs> again, isn't necessarily the way to go, unless if a legislator wants to do that, if Sandy Pappas wants to do this, of course we should work with her. 
But I don't think, uh, my opinion is that we don't need to call another delegation meeting as Ramsey County unless you go, hey, we, we got to meet. But I think being really strategic about who our champions are, who we need to bring along, whatever information we need to get out, especially to the commissioners, um, so that we're saying the same things when we're talking to legislators. Mm -hmm. But I think we really just need to be strategic because, I mean, this is all about the bonding bill, and it's a short session, and let's get her done. Yeah, Ryan and then Jim. Just Madam Chair, from the scheduling side too. So we do the eight week workshop look ahead planning with the chair all the time and the staff to make sure we know what's coming up and through that conversation always know what's happening. So I won't speak to the ledge delegation specifically, but in terms of how we plan for it around here, I think the open ask to both Jen and Melissa working with John and Karen is to say as things start to come together, wherever we see weaknesses where we as a collective might need to talk about something, bring clarity or bring it, how do we map that onto that calendar? And we intentionally leave flexibility yeah. every month to be able to fit in conversations. And because of the recent conversations that keep Tuesdays open <coughs> and stuff, we will make that space Great. fit. Great. It also gives you a vehicle for where if you do need to engage at the Capitol in some sort of a delegation meeting or a half delegation meeting, <coughs> we can <coughs> leverage that accordingly. So yeah. from a scheduling side, working through the chair and with these folks and then with the ledge chairs, I think we do have a structure where as, we, as it comes into focus with deadlines and dates, we are ready, as ready as you can be to move in a planful way. Yeah, right. I, I appreciate that. And Jen, did you want to say anything? The only thing I would add to that, I really um, thought it worked well last year how um, most of you text and read emails real regularly and we had great access in getting people up to testify quickly. Um, hanging around, you know, when you come up and hang around the um, floor mm -hmm. sessions and mm -hmm. pull people off the floor, I think those are way more effective than trying to get everyone in a room where staff, we're not going to get the, no one's going to give us the ability to get a hearing room and use up their time and get another delegation other than maybe that one bonding, mm -hmm. that one bonding that yeah, we I talked think, about. I think that would be just because we committed to sort of doing it, we'll just do one more, but then we won't do them after that. I mean, then I think we are going to have to resort to. I mean, then we will just do the call out. Work. I think it's good to have them all in, as many as we can in the room. They don't even need, actually know who all their own delegation meeting members yeah. are. I mean, it was interesting. They're like, they're in Ramsey County? I'm like, yeah, you have a, you have a big group of people in Ramsey County. So, I mean, it was very interesting. Mm -hmm. So I think, we, because we, we said we would do it, and if I think we can focus it around bonding with Sandy Pappas, but then otherwise, I agree we should, um, yeah, I, I think it's good to be in our individual meetings. And as much as you can, let uh, Jen and Melissa know um, when you're going to be down there so that we can just keep that, we can, we can keep that information uh, tallied about who we're talking to and, and when, and um, so that when they're talking to them, they have some knowledge of that. But thanks, everyone, for always just being available and to be down there as much as we are. I mean, I think it just says a lot about our county board. Could you do me a favor, <laughs> or probably all the commissioners a favor, and just resend all of both of your contact information? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That way, because I don't know that I have yours in my. In my yeah, ab absolutely. And the cell phone. <clears throat> and do we have we have all this information electronically, or do we have to look it up on? It would be sort of nice if we. I don't know about you all, but I wouldn't, I mean, I have it in my, uh, not, I don't have, I don't want to go on the board docs to look for this mm -hmm. information that we're, you know, our, our platform, mm -hmm. but it'd be nice if we had that online. We, could we actually have a government it. relations page, I think, on RamseyNet, oh, okay. um, but yeah. we can send it to you electronically. Yeah, yeah. just some of these things, and we should, we can send I you think we should all really, really look at these yeah. handouts we're giving out, and if there's anything mm -hmm. we should be highlighting in a greater way or not highlighting. <laughs> I think we should be on the website. It's on the website. Well, Jim, well, yeah. Well, now that you mentioned that one so, last And it's on our yeah. website. And it's on our website. Right. <laughs> okay, great. One, great. La one last thing, and that is, and, and Jen and I talked about this, and that is we are asking money for the public realm. We're asking money yeah. for the park. Yes. And we want a 50-50 partnership. The towers, and I've told this to the developers too, I said, I'm not going up there selling your towers. Mm -hmm. You could, you could, you, on the model, I would like to see those towers to be tiny and the park to be big. <laughs> not the other way tiny around. Tiny towers, <laughs> big park. I like that. Yeah. So maybe a different sheet, like this just talked about represent, but have a different type of our ask, which is public realm. I mean, I don't know. 
But I don't know how we present We've this. overcome that. The first okay. objection we got from everybody is we <laughs> subsidizing these towers. I know. That's what I'm worried about. Well, yeah. It's, it's and exactly now that's over. Yeah. That's yeah. over. Have, but we, but let's not okay. just reinforce. Jim and then Tony, and then we're going to, and then Jen again. So Jim, Tony, then Jen. Jim. Yeah. I think that's really important piece, right? So they know they're not. Right. But actually, I mean, again, kind of to, to get the sense of urgency why all of a sudden we're here is the fact that this public investment will get us two towers. Yes. And the more we can communicate that, yeah. Yeah. it'll get us right. $50 million right. of private investment mm -hmm. in this community right now. So you turn that around, it's, this isn't about us supporting the private development. No, this right. is about us, the developer, it's about mm -hmm. us actually bringing in $250 million for $40 million That's partnership. Yes, and the but, more we but, can communicate but, that yeah. and have that lens, I think, helps to right. solve mm -hmm. a number of the issues that we've talked about. Yeah, but let me yeah. tell you, most people learn, or well, a lot of people, I shouldn't say most, and especially the United States, it's all visual. Right. So this, yeah. The picture's worth a thousand words, so at least I totally agree with you, Jim, but mm -hmm. the part gets diminished, and that's what we're asking money for. Mm -hmm. And so we should go in reverse. Here's the big part, yeah. and by the way, <laughs> it gets us the 5,000 jobs, right, and it, it gets yeah. us this and that. Yeah. 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 I because agree. Okay. that's the, every time, that's the first that's question. I agree, people, right. right. We subsidize new buildings. And that's true. And, and, and so, so Jim, you're okay. Tony, you have a question? Yeah, and yeah, then Jen. thank you. So I just wanted to very quickly, and I don't need you to spend a lot of time, but to address the bullet for addressing racial disparities and out-of-home placements. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about where that is. Again, we can hear more later. So uh, we had a meeting with uh, Paul Allwood last week, mm -hmm. uh, and we discussed that the coalition had developed sort of a fourth version of the bill at the end of last session. We found that version of the bill. Yay. Yep. Uh, it should be in your email. Okay. Um, haven't set up a meeting yet with the coalition, but in talking to a few members, I'm getting inklings that that version was not the full piece in the valley group consensus that we had hoped it would be. Um, in other conversations with Representative Moran, she has really focused on this like 14 pill package that DHS is looking at that takes pieces mm -hmm. of the legislation. Uh, my understanding is she's planning to introduce those bills. Uh, it's not clear to me yet what she's planning for them to happen on the Senate side, uh, but I'm working on getting some time with her committee administrator to really talk through are they going to have time to hear those bills? Do they have a prioritization for them? Sort of like, what's the path as we go forward? So I think we do want to support Representative Moran and what she wants to do with this language. All right, and you know, I would just have one thing to say about that mm -hmm. and to share with uh, board members that it is really very important that we liaison with Moran's office because she's leading in that area and it can make a very big difference as to what can succeed at the legislature. Mm -hmm. I think we also here at Ramsey County because of the strategic plan that we have and the commitment that we've made to community, mm -hmm. you know, to ensure that we are leading with community mm -hmm. and not just for community, but really truly with community, that we lean in to understand what we are learning from our community engagement sessions and that that have a bearing on how we move forward. I think we need to be informative to, uh, to uh, Representative Moran's office also as to the support that may exist in a coalition for moving forward on a bill that is engaged with community and with the community support already. So I would just want us to be sure that we're informing um, the representative as we look at coalitioning with her to ensure that there is good, positive movement in this area of addressing racial disparities in our own place. Mm -hmm. And speaking and of these, oh, yeah. 14 bills, though, so what are we supposed to do with <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so well, we support <laughs> what, I, what's going on here, but we have to. Yeah. I, I know yeah, we, we yeah, we all need to get going, but I did want to say, um, Alice did bring up the transportation funding that, you know, oh, yeah. Republicans <laughs> really want to put you know, transportation funding in the bonding bill, they want, or they want to pay cash for this when really we should be using other methods. And uh, I know we're working on that. Um, so I didn't know if we needed to be 
you know, educating our legislators on any of this or if there's anything we can do. Uh, I know, thank you, Brian, for being here. But if there's, um, if we feel like, I feel like we would be remiss if we didn't at least mention how important transportation funding might be, but if, do we, do you get a sense of where it's gonna be at this session as far as, I mean, we don't know where it's gonna to be. I'm <laughs> talking to, I'm not I'm actually looking at Jennifer. I'm not looking at Brian, I'm looking at Jennifer. Okay. Um, about anything, I mean, we just, well, I think the only way we're gonna see it is in the bonding bill. Right. Well, everybody's all over the map right. with the people we sat. Manager. Okay. That's a, I have <clears throat> Pinto who says, I want to champion Riverview. I just want to get money. That's my focus. I support River's Edge, but I am, Riverview mm -hmm. is my baby. I'm the author, and I'm going to get mm -hmm. many. He doesn't wow. care where he comes from. <laughs> okay. Wow. You talk to good. Alice. Alice says it belongs in the transportation bill. Mm -hmm. It belongs in the gas tax. and. Blah, blah, blah. So our legislators you are talk not to in all of them, okay. they're all on a different page. Mm -hmm. So okay. you tell me how what, I mean, I don't know. That's a whole lot of task, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, but well, I'm well, open. I'm just telling you what I've observed. Uh, yeah. and Madam Chair, I, I would just say, as issues come up, that's why we wanted to create the venue here to be able to bring them up. But while it remains this unclear, the pontification, I just, I don't feel comfortable that yeah. I know enough to give you enough yet. Yeah. But it's there, I'm, and that's I'm why as things come there, together, we can either. bring it back. Yeah. Okay, it, brought, it came up, Alice brought yeah. it up in she the delegation it up to meeting, me too. yeah. So, and um, it's just about where the funding for transportation comes from. And we should be careful not to pay cash, yeah. Yeah, I could say a lot more, but right. I think right now, yeah. until there's an actual bill, okay. right? We should be able, we should be supportive of anything we can do to bring dollars into Ramsey County, whether it's supporting Riverview, or, okay. or gold line or anything, anything, right? And right. I, you know, I don't want to. I know where Alice wants to go. She doesn't yeah. want us to take that money because she wants to force a transportation bill. Yeah. It's not going to work. It's mm -hmm. not a strategy that's going to work. Okay. And we can't afford to hurt ourselves by, by agreeing by to that strategy. Being, okay. Until Even if we agree with that, we should for us to actually weigh in on. Mm -hmm. okay. I think we need to take every dollar that we possibly mm -hmm. can, any way we can. Get. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy I brought it up because I was, on, you know, because I think we don't disagree that we would rather have it come over here. But you're right. We can't yep. say we can't say no to it over here, even if we agree it should be coming out of here. Okay. Well, I, I'm glad. I'm glad that's clear in my in my mind too. But I really appreciate. I, frankly, I just think all of you are amazing I hear, uh, the staff and members. Um, about all the work we are doing on this, and you've all been just great about being down at the legislature. Continue to keep in touch about that. You've been great about letting legislative com com team, that can be team, know when, when you have something you want to bring out so we're not getting surprises like at the board meeting, which we aren't gonna, we haven't started quite yet. But, um, you know, we really appreciate that. We, we aren't gonna try and handle issues by surprise at a board meeting, but, you know, bring it up to our team, you know, in the week before. And just thanks so much to, to you know, Jen and Melissa for, all of your work and we'll just all stay in touch and um, we just hope this is a good a good year for us at the, at the legislature and we'll just not apologize for anything right. we're not going to say let's hope, hope this is no a good no year. it's going to be gonna this right. a good year you're right this is going to be a good year thank you for that thanks everyone thanks for thanks uh, yeah adjourn